On an infrastructure front, when it comes to large storms, like the flooding that we've just recently seen, there's a whole variety of things that we can do. And other cities are doing these things, so it's not really radical. But for example, having less uh, hard surfaces, less asphalt, having more permeable concrete, um, ensuring that we have bioswills, that we're really looking at how we can use soft surfaces in order to absorb more of the runoff. Right now, we have a tremendous amount of runoff that's going into our stormwater system, and you see overflows when we have big storms like the one that we've just had. We need to be thinking more aggressively about the use of bioswales, about the use of permeable surfaces, about the integration of soft surfaces into our developments in the future. Now, we have a great uh, green roof bylaw, and we're implementing it, and it's working very effectively. That's going to have an impact on, in the future with respect to the quality of that runoff. So one of the problems in a big storm like this is that you get a lot of overflow and you end up with a lot of noxious materials, sewage, etc. that actually ends up flowing into the water supply and that creates a significant problem. Green roofs are a really big piece of the puzzle because not only do they absorb some of that water, but they also purify that water so that the runoff is of a higher quality. So uh, really, there are things that we can do in the urban planning front in terms of ensuring that we're, we're absorbing more of the rainfall when it, when it comes our way. But there's also some significant infrastructure investments that we need to be making. For example, in Corktown Commons, we've just put in a $28 million uh, storm water mitigation program in order to free up the lands that have allowed the Athletes Village to be developed in the West Onland. So there's a real opportunity here um, for us to think much more aggressively about those kinds of mitigation measures. In other cities, there's lots of excitement right now about shifting from being really auto-oriented to becoming more multimodal. And we're seeing this all over the world. Uh, the London, England just unveiled the billion dollar plan for investing in a cycling trackway. We see in New York City there's been a significant investment in cycling infrastructure. Focusing on people in cities is really a shift that's taking place right now that is very exciting. And I think it's the great quality and legacy of the City of Toronto. We've done a great job in the past focusing on neighborhoods and focusing on people. And the difference is you can focus on moving cars, for example, and you're going to plan your street in a very different way than if you focus on moving people. Because if you're focusing on moving people, you'll focus on pedestrians, on cyclists, on transit, as well as ensuring that vehicles can get through as well. If we want to focus on, in all of our planning, on a people-oriented approach, uh, it means we think about things like completing our communities. We think about things like the public realm, the spaces that we share in common, and how we can animate them and draw people into public space. It means we start to think about movement in a much more holistic way. Those trends exist in other great cities of the world right now. There's great precedents of cities that are really taking back public space in a significant way to enhance quality of life. And those are the cities that are really attracting a significant number of people, particularly that 18 to 34 year old cohort, which is so important to the future of the economy of the city. You know, as, as the boomers someday retire, we're actually going to have really significant needs in in terms of uh, our labor force in this city. And so attracting that young talent is a fundamental part of ensuring a sustainable co economy over the long term. Well, we know that that cohort chooses where to live based on the quality of the places that are being designed and built. So we can see that happening in other cities. I think we're, I think it's on our radar screen and we're talking about it and we're thinking about it, but there's a big, a big leap that we need to take if we're going to be that city of the future.